Good evening. And welcome to the Tuesday evening lectures. It's a pleasure to, to have you here. I am Maria Ortiz, curator at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth and also the curator of Jamie Holmes' Make a Revolution Irresistible. It's my pleasure to introduce you tonight to our speaker, Jamie Holmes, who was born and raised in Thibodeau, Louisiana, and he's known for his paintings that portray intimate and poignant scenes of distinctly American communities, families, and traditions. Holmes draws heavily on his own recollections to depict the stories and experiences of black life in the deep American South, capturing moments of celebration and struggle. The artist who works intuitively and without formal artistic training creates expressive tableaus that incorporate portraiture, symbols, texts, and objects to reveal universal truths to personal narrative. Holmes, a self-taught painter, followed by his graduation, he spent more than a decade working in an oil field. He relocated to Dallas in 2016. One of the things he did when he relocated to Dallas was that he actually came to our museum, saw an amazing show by Cos, created by sheep curator Andrew Carnes, and said, I think I can do this better. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to know now how that story developed. But since then, he has had a lot of exhibitions, including at the Library Street Collective, Deitch Projects in LA, Marianne Bosque in New York, Nassima Landau Projects in Tel Aviv, the Dallas Art Museum, Dallas Contemporary, among others, MFA Houston, LACMA. His work is including in prestigious uh, permanent collections at the Brooklyn Museum, the Dallas Museum of Art, the Hammer Museum in LA, ICA Miami, the Museum of Fine Art Houston, the National Museum of Art at Duke University, New Orleans Museum of Art, Paris Art Museum Miami, the Xiao Museum of Contemporary Art, and of course, the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. So further ado, Jamie. Uh, hello, I'm not a man of many words, but uh, I'm gonna ramble for about an hour. Um, but yeah, so, the Modern was the first time I've ever uh, entered an art museum. I never heard the term of art gallery in my life. I haven't heard the term art museum in my life at all. I thought a museum was just a place that had old coins, dinosaur bones, and, and things like that because growing up in Thibodeau, the only time you really seen a painting of anything, it was an alligator or a bird, and it was always at a restaurant. So I never, I never thought that, I never thought that um, being a painter was like a, even a thing to even do or care about. So uh, it's, it started with my, it started with my grandmother. She had this, this image of her mom, and you know, this, this picture, I think it came from like the 1800s because my, my grandmother was born in like the early 20s or 1919 or something like that. So um, she had this one image of her mom and she asked me if I could sketch it and she will give the sketch to her sister. But after I finished sketching the, the, the image, she ended up keeping it, framing it, and I think she kept everything, to be honest, because I, the last time I went to her house, uh, the last time I went to her house, I, I noticed she had doubles of a lot of things that I sketched because she was like, yeah, I'm gonna give this to Auntie Clara. And I'm like, and, I, and when, I, when I was looking through some of the pictures, she still had like the double. So she, kept, <laughs> she, she ended up keeping everything. But I think that from her, that's where the confidence really came in at. And I was, I was a sixth grader at that time, and I, I had noticed that I was a little bit different than most people that was in the neighborhood because, you know, um, growing up where we grew up, you know, it was, it was about crack, you know, crack and just drugs. 
And so I had the opportunity to, to uh, I had the opportunity to have every excuse to make nothing out of myself. I could have took the easy way out, but instead I just found something that um, I was passionate about and which was just always staying focused and just sketching because originally I thought that I was gonna get a job at Nickelodeon because I thought as a, as a sketch artist, you would just end up sketching cartoons, not so much making anything that mattered at this time. Um, so I, I took a chance leaving the oil field to uh, come to Dallas to try something different with myself. Um, that's why I, 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 I've always, I'm in a position now to where I could be in LA, I could be in New York, I could be anywhere, but I, um, I have a soft spot for Texas because it kind of uh, showed me a, a sense of freedom that I didn't know I had. Like growing up, growing up in the South, in Thibodeau, it's um, the swamps, and then there's the sugar cane, and then the people live in the middle of all that. And it's like, you could feel the tension from slavery there. You could, you still reminded of the plantations because when you pass by them, they're still there. And they didn't, you would think that these things would blow down for like the hurricanes and things like that. But for some reason, like these, these slave quarters just remained, um, remained stable somehow. But um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to like, end up like that because I started noticing like a cycle of people around me and you know with the funerals and, and burying people that I really loved at an early age. So I just was like, man, I, I gotta try to do something. So I came to Dallas and uh, never heard of a bus. I, I not heard, but I never really got on a, a school bus because we had to walk to school. So like when I came out here and I saw the DART bus, I had to try to figure that out. I was, I was living in Irvin, but I was getting dropped off in Frisco. So I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know that you had to get on the dark bus in the direction of where you live. So, <laughs> so it, 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 it took me a while to like really understand it because I started realizing I was like, damn man, I'm, I'm really country. Like I, I don't, I don't. I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing out here, but. I, I, uh, I figured I would try to make it, not try, but I figured I was gonna make it work somehow, some way, so I started moving around Texas, uh, Dallas, trying to figure things out, and um, one day I was sketching in, in my office, and uh, this Spanish kid, he walked up and he was like, you like art? And I didn't really, I, I'm, I'm still trying to understand the idea of art versus sketches. You know, so if he would have said, you like to sketch, instantly I would have been like, oh yeah, I love to sketch. But he was like, you like art? I was like, well, what is art? I, you know, I was still trying to understand the idea behind these things. And he told me to come to the modern. So it took me about, I think about two weeks of wondering what I should wear because <laughs> I wasn't sure I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I thought you had to wear like a suit and a tie to a place like this. I didn't know like you could just come however you want to come, you know? So it, it took me a little, a little time to, to uh, build up enough confidence. And uh, when I came in, it was a cause exhibition. And then I noticed the, there was a younger generation here and the sneakers. And I started noticing like a, a, a culture that I had always loved, but I didn't know it even really exists like outside of New York or anything like that. So, um, and when I saw the work, it was easier for me to digest because I had already been sketching cartoons because I'm thinking I'm gonna work at Nickelodeon. <laughs> um, so I had already been sketching cartoons at the time and I just was like, man, I, I, could, I think I could do this. Like, I, it can't be that impossible. Like I'm already sketching cartoons anyways. So I think the first thing I did that I thought was art was uh, this Daffy Duck painting holding a whole bunch of money, I think it was. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's, it's at my mom's house right now. <laughs> um, 
so after after that, I just I just was like, man, I could I could really I could I could feel how much I really love doing this, like the brush strokes. I felt like I was I was actually doing something that I loved for the first time in my life. Um, I thought I loved the oil field. That's why I stayed there for 13 years of my life. I didn't. I, I thought I loved it because I thought that was just the end game for a person coming from Louisiana. It's like you're just a worker, and that's about it. That's all you're gonna get out of this. So, um, and I just started. I started started painting and 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 taking it serious right off the bat because, again. I had always had like a, a mentality of figuring things out. Like I was, you know, always taking care of my little brother. So I had to figure it out. Like, man, how to make him feel like us eating tuna fish tonight is like eating a steak. Like, how can you lie to a kid? But I had to figure these things out to take that heat off my mom. So, you know, we, we ate sugar cane, you know, and sugar cane and peanut butter. Sugar cane was free, peanut butter was cheap, so we was making that. And so my little brother had always been one of those people to, to, to keep me not feeling selfish and, until at least when I had my own kids. Um, but, but yeah, so, and, and, and I'm here now and I'm constantly, doing research and I'm finding out new things and I feel like I'm talking to people about things that they already know. I'm talking to them with so much excitement and, I, and sometimes I'm like, damn man, I should just like chill out. Like, <laughs> you know, because I'm, now I'm 39, but I haven't walked into an art museum in my life until I was uh, about 33. So I'm still learning and and, and I, I, I'm still getting excited. So I don't think that, um, I don't think that I'll ever get tired of it. Uh, my goal is to, to paint until, until the, the clock stops ticking. Um, it keeps me going. I don't look at it um, from a financial standpoint. I look at it from just a, a passion, a love, and it's more poetry to me. It's not so much of creating an image for people to like. It's just more of a, it's more like a, a, a poem. Like if I was writing a poem, um, that would be the imagery uh, for the pieces. So I, I, that's why I don't uh, really announce myself as like this painter, more of a poet, because I feel like a poet figured out how to take something that is dark at times and show the beauty in it. You know, um, just like my situation just growing up, um, knowing how dark it could have been, but I always figured out how to like, see like the end game, like see something better than that. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't for, it, it wasn't the drug dealers that was around. It was actually a magazine that I stole from the barber shop. It was, a, it, was a, it was a DuPont magazine and it had Ferraris in there and Rolexes. So I was like, damn, this, this shit does exist. So I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure out how I could get me a few of those. But, um, but, uh, so it, honestly, that that and my grandmother and you know my other family members that uh, that kind of promoted me to push me to to keep sketching for them and and things like that and um, that's what kept me focused and and kept me doing the right things in life because I could again I could have spent so much time doing all the wrong shit because um, it was easier to do but it was harder to actually survive. And that's why when I'm painting, I think about like the people that are, are still surviving America. And, and we shouldn't be trying to survive America, we should just be living in it. But we still surviving as if we were living in a, a, a third world country. And even those countries, like those people are happy as hell. So. I don't. <laughs> so I, I realized that uh, survival just come from just is within, you know. So and uh, from there, 
I guess I'm going to show a few of my, my pieces and I'm gonna open up to questions because I'm curious to know what, uh, what others think about the work. Um, Cause as an artist, you can always sit and, and think that you know it all and it's my work, I, I, you know, I made it, I could say what I want. But I'm always curious to hear um, what other people think and I get to explain um, what it really is because if, I feel like if you don't tell your story, somebody else will and for the most part, it's not always right. So I figured um, we could take care of those things tonight. <laughs> so I'm gonna just start this, this presentation. And if anybody got questions, just ask me. But I'm going to start right here. Uh, this is an actual house that I grew up in uh, up until I was about 12. Uh, this painting is called Box Fan Heroes. Um, with this painting, it was a, it's a, it's a, a, pitch, a painting of a shotgun house that I actually lived in, but the house was, was white. I didn't want to, at the time, I wasn't that brave to like put my business out there like that. So I just changed the color to green instead of white. But um, I've always said through that box fan, I was always able to see everything that I wanted to be because in the, uh, the house was right on the street and through the box fan, I would be able to look through the windows without getting caught from my older cousins and, 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 and friends and everybody that was on the streets, you know, doing their thing. I didn't want them to know that I was watching and paying attention to the game. And uh, so I would just hide through the box fan and, you know, seeing those cars and, and, and seeing the love they was getting, I was like, man, I, that's kind of, that's what I want because inside the house, the devil lived in our house because, you know, uh, I, was growing, I was growing up through a, a domestic violence situation with my mom and stepdad. So that was like my escape to seeing, like uh, staying calm and seeing uh, a vision of things that I could get one day, you know, even though it, it, it might not be the, the right way of uh, obtaining it. But uh, as a 12 year old that has nothing, like everything looks good, you know. Um, so this is a, a painting that I did in 2019. Uh, it's named Uncle. And my uncle just passed away. Uh, he passed away the week before my opening of my exhibition here. Um, this painting was about him because he, he worked, he tried so hard to like take all the boys and make them men. And I felt like, you know, all the trials that he, the things that he dealt with and the things that he did, you know, spending time in Rikers and to like, and, he, and he, sh he just showed us to how to be a man and he was fighting for equality when everybody else was sitting in their house, he was taking chances like that, you know, which my mom uh, also joined him in, in Harlem. But, um, I painted that because I was just kind of like, I was thinking about him one day, and I was like, man, you know, my uncle, that dude's like the man of men, and, but yet he got chopped down by, by just America on his own, you know? And so it, it made me feel some kind of way, because I, I, I understood it, because I was working in the oil field, like you were worthless in the oil field, especially if you're young and black, so, I just, I just, I understood that, and uh, it just, just moved me um, to to talk about him one day. Again, a lot of my work is like a diary, and it's uh, real poetic to me. So, um, that's a portrait of me and my little brother. Again, I had always looked out for my little brother. That was like, I'm still looking out for him. He li he lives out here. I moved him out here. He works in my studio, and it's, it's, it's just like we were still like six and seven years old because I'm still calling my mom when I'm mad about something that he did. I'm still snitching on him, I'm telling on him, like, you know, Corey's out here doing this. So 
uh, I, I just, I want to share that moment with others of how, uh, how much he, he does mean to me. He, he, he really does. Um, and I also, this painting was based off of like showing black men in everything that, you know, black on its own, the color black on its own is intimidating, right? It's, it's always like, oh, it's, it's a color for a funeral or, you know, it's always like some intimidating, bold color. So uh, although like uh, they're wearing black clothes, also they're, they're, they're black, black folks up there and just trying to normalize. At the time, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about no museums and, and things like that. I'm just, just creating work. And I was like, man, I just want to normalize like black people just doing black, like just doing normal human shit, like human, human things. Um, <laughs> So I, and until this day, he refused to get his hair cut unless I cut his hair. I've been cutting his hair. I've been cutting his hair forever. So be, when, he's, when he's getting off on a Friday at the studio, he's like, hey, he bought his own clippers. Hey, he cut my hair. So it's like one of those things that we do together. And we never grew up being able to tell each other, I love you. And you know, and, and those things, but I, I think that's our way of saying we love each other in a way. Um, even my mom, like, I still, um, I still struggle with the I love you uh, thing. Like, I, I love my mom to death, but I don't think that, we just didn't grow up being able to hug each other and say I love you and things like that. So uh, we just find other ways to show it. And I think that's, Deep down inside, I, I feel like that's the, one of the biggest reasons why uh, I, I do what I do to say I love you. So, but I think you have a question. What is a flower represent, or what is a flower? Um, softening up the mood, like uh, making it feel safe, making it feel uh, real uh, loved. Because around this time, you know, the the George Floyd. Um, situation had happened as well, and and again, I'm thinking about like, man, like, why, why black folks, why people think black folks are so mean and so aggressive? Like, whenever when I grew, up, excuse me, I'm sorry, but the the way I grew up, I saw both sides of it. I saw love, and I also saw the other side of it too. But it is what it is. I, you know, uh, that's just life. Um, any more questions? Yeah. I noticed in the last two pieces that there's numbers in your works. What is, what's the symbolism behind the numbers? Okay, so um, with the numbers, it's just more of like a stream of conscious and the cost on your life. Like, you know, um, I never wanted my paintings to, I, I'm, I'm happy what uh, what my paintings cost, but I never let it be one of those things. So it, um, I did that a while back, like basing it off of like, man, like these, it's, it's paper, it's canvas, it's, you know, like just one of those conversations I'm, I'm having with myself. And a lot of things that I do put on a canvas is based off of how I'm feeling at the moment. <laughs> Like, um, I might know how to start a canvas, but I never know what it's going to uh, finish. Like, because if the canvas is still calling me and there's things that need to be said or done, I'm just going to put it on a canvas and, and, and that's, that's that. So. There's another question over here, Jamie. I don't want to interrupt your beautiful slides, but um, oh, one thing I wanted to say is don't chill out. <laughs> I don't think you should ever chill out, especially if you're excited about your work. Um, but I'm just curious, you talked quite a bit about your sketches and your drawings, and then I was just curious when you transi transitioned into paint and color and maybe what that experience felt like getting into a world with with paint and color? Um, it was, at first, I, it was weird. At first, because the strokes was different. I wasn't used to it. Um, and to this day, I still paint like I sketch. 
so I mix my colors, and when I'm when I'm painting on a canvas, I'm actually painting just the same exact way if I was sketching, if I was shading, and things like that. Um, instead of the regular the, the brush strokes like this, I don't even I still don't even know how to do that yet. <laughs> Um, any questions? <laughs> but anyway, so this painting right here is one of those things where uh, I just want to just shed light on some of those folks that, you know, they, they, they might have made uh, decisions when they were really young and, 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 and don't see their kid until they're able to walk, you know. I, I, I'm too familiar with, with situations like that. Uh, I just want to normalize those people. I want them to feel like somebody actually see them. And I get it, because I grew up like it, so I get you have all the chances in the world. You, it's easy to do the wrong thing. So, um, you know, it's just, just putting, them, putting them, their images there and not leaving them out of history. You know, a lot of people that's in my work and uh, the figures that's in my work and the things that they're doing is just because I just feel like it would just be wrong to leave them out of history. Because every, if, if I went back home and I didn't still see people shooting dice and playing dominoes and hanging out and, sh and stuff, I wouldn't put it in my work because I felt like, you know what, you know what, hey, we, 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 we moving, we moving forward, you know, but because there's a lot of people still doing the same things, I don't want them to feel left out. So a thousand years from now, you're gonna know that there's some black folks in Thibodeau shooting dice and, and playing dominoes, so. I had one question about the other thing, so that. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, the Right. Um, I see something there, and you you have to confirm it. But I'm looking at the guy with the memorial T-shirt, right? And then the young lady got the uh, on her shirt. She's got him the money. That means it's her birthday. Yes. And so I'm I'm seeing you know somebody who died, and then this person, it's their birthday. Right. And I'm wondering. I was wondering about the connection between. Um. So. At home, like the whole the the rest in peace T-shirts are are like one of those things where it's it's so common, it's so common. It's like it's it turns into almost an outfit at that point, you know. So I just felt like um, um, showing that that other side of of you know the just daily life at home. So with the rest in peace T-shirts, it's just. It's, it's so normal, and, and seeing these posters now, I don't think it's, I don't think it's t-shirts anymore, now it's like these banners, but it's just one of those things where it's so normal that you could be going to a kid's party and, and you know, you just left a funeral at the same time, so. Jay, what yeah. was your idea about adding the clouds? Um, again, to lighten up the mood, um, there's all, I, uh, you know, the skies are gray in the painting, but the clouds are blue and uh, putting sunshine because, you know, that, that, that guy is, he's free, he's with his daughter and, and uh, enjoying his day. So it doesn't matter if it's raining outside or not, he's able to enjoy his day. So um, at least that's what I was feeling at the time when I created it, so. I just want to say it's something so very nostalgic about this painting that resonates with me. I think if you you grown up in an African American community and you were that little girl, your mother put thousands of barrettes in your hair. Right, hair. right. Yeah. <laughs> it feels so familiar. Right. And then you have the charcoal grill there. That right. I mean, it's just very. I, I love this piece. Right, and and a lot of these things are, are well, all of it is what I I had uh, originally like experienced. Of me, I have a photograph of me and one of my little cousins, and she has like these borats. Exactly. Matter of fact, I looked at the picture to get the colors from the borats. <laughs> when you initially started with your sketches, 
was that line with charcoal or pencil? I, my question is, when did you make the, was there a shift to color? And when that started with the paint? Well, I was only sketching up until, uh, I think, uh, probably when I was like 18. And I never really, I just doodled after that, like here and there, somewhere, somebody's desk or something like that. So I ain't never really like made like these sketches that I was so serious about up until right now. But um, the transition to color was just one of those things that I just understood in a way. It's like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying like I'm this, this prolific colorist or something like that, but I just, I like to use, I like to do things that make sense to me, you know, and color makes sense. And the things that I put in my paintings, it all makes sense in my head. So I just make my move and, and roll with it, so. Um, so this painting is called The Illusion. Uh, that's a portrait of my brother. Um, I moved my brother here from Thibodeau in 2021. And I noticed, I moved, him in, I moved him from Thibodeau to Deep Ellum. And I think the people that know Deep Ellum, how active it is. So I, 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 I didn't know that he was gonna go running wild in Deep Ellum. <laughs> He, he started running wild in Deep Ellum, but I was, I was for it because I was so happy to see him like just, just be free, you know? And I was able to see myself in him, but he had a way better situation. Again, I'm a good big brother, so. Uh, I, I made sure he was straight, but he, um, being able to move around and have so much confidence in and doing the things that he was doing, I was like, man, like, man, I would have, I would have thought that he would have leaned on me a little more than he did, but he was just doing his own thing, cause I was, I was thinking we was gonna be able to hang out. I thought he was gonna come to my house. I, he didn't, I, I wouldn't see him un, un, unless we was at the studio, and that's when I realized I was like, man. A lot of times, like it's just an illusion. Like you don't, you you're free, but you don't, you don't know it until you just, just do it. It's just like when I quit my job to to paint. Like I didn't even need the job. I was I didn't need the job two years in, and I just was like, man, why why I'm doing this to myself? But um, seeing him being free and and doing his thing, it 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 made me happy and. He's still doing what he's doing, and uh, I only see him on when he comes to the studio, so that's about it. But he calls me every single day. He, he, he calls me a lot it's, it's for random stuff, like, like every, every day he calls me. Questions? Um, what was the text? It, it looked like, what if we... <laughs> It's not warrant free. Oh, so uh, I think it said, "What if we really? What if we really? We really are free?" You know, I think that's what I was thinking in my head at the time when I was working on it because it was there was a painting I did uh, for the Fourth of July at the same time, and um, I was just thinking about that as a whole. Like, so if you look at the sparrows, the sparrows are behind the, the, the fence, but you have one that decided that he was just gonna leave the, the crowd and go do his thing. And that's how I felt uh, I made it here. And also I felt when I took him from Thibodeau, it showed uh, I was able to see a different side of him because I didn't, I've always thought he was just lazy, but he, he, he's, really, he's really not, he just, he was just uninspired. Like it was like, what what there's to do? He was just waiting for a late night call to go to a funeral. That's about it, you know. So uh, he was he was inspired when he came out here, and he's he's still doing his thing. Um, yeah. So this painting, just like your father. So a lot of times. 
I think, I don't, I think it's like a universal mom thing to where if you have a, a son, you're always like, you act just like your dad or you got a temper just like your dad or just something just like your dad. And, uh, you know, I, I was uh, real familiar with it hearing others talk about that, but I never heard that um, ever because my dad had left a long, uh, long time ago. Uh, when I was born, he, he bounced. But uh, so this portrait right here is, I mean, this, this painting right here is based off of that idea of, and you, you're, you're gonna be just like your dad. And sometimes I feel like that's on its own too much pressure for a kid. Um, even if it's a good thing, that's too much pressure on a kid. Even if it's, you know, so a lot of times, um, that's just, it's, it's just too much, especially in the, uh, speaking on the black community. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of that happening, and I've also seen a lot of, let's see if this thing works. So if you look right here, there's a guy right here. See his earring right here? So it's not this kid ear, so there's two ears. And it's almost like the spirit of the guy that's on the T-shirt. So a lot of times you hear those same stories all the time of the, man, he just had a, a newborn and he's not here. So like I, I heard it so many times uh, and, and, you, and it's, it still happens. It still happens. It's almost like one of those things where, you know, even even when my son was born, I was like, I must, I'm about to die like sometime soon because it just don't make sense that I'm going to be able to live uh, after this because the, the cycle, that's just one of those vicious cycles of growing up, even if you're a good kid, you're still in the hot, hostile environment sometimes, so. I have a question. I, I noticed that when I first saw this painting, this is another one of my favorite pieces of work of yours, but I did have a question about the, the pink square right on the windshield. Okay. Is that, is that symbolic in any way? Well, the, the more I started digging into like like the art world and going to these museums where there's like the the real like uh, like these Renaissance paintings and I noticed like uh, even modern artists they sign their name on the front and like the way I grew up you just keep people out of your business so it's like you don't you know you don't, you don't need I don't want to put my name all over everything and, and things like that although I paint a lot of portraits of myself but um, so what I started doing was. I was like, man, I was like, if, if somebody walks in and see the painting, like, how are they gonna know that's my painting? Cause I didn't even know they put these little things with your name and a year. I didn't know they was doing all that. Cause if you go to galleries, galleries don't do that. It's just a painting on the wall. And then you gotta ask somebody like, who's this? And you gotta ask all these questions that sometimes they don't even answer. So I felt like I wanted to create something like more of like a symbol for when somebody's like uh, walking up on it and, and it has to feel right. You know, it's one of those things where it, it has to feel right. I don't do it all the time, but when it feels good, I, I make my move with it. Um, another thing that I realized was when I was doing it, it was like, man, you know, this is a, a, a perfectly done painting. And I added, something there, a form of abstraction there that some people would, man, why would you do that? You know, cause it, it, you know, it don't belong there. And that's how I've always felt with my work, you know, being in places like this, I'm like, man, like, I feel like an imposter almost, you know? <laughs> but, um, so just continuing putting, you know, uh, things that I feel into the work. So that's, that's how that, Originally, uh, originally started. Thank you. Would, would it be similar when you talk about when you have the pink street? Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Right. Okay. Yep. Jamie, thank you. I'm sorry. She can go ahead. Oh, I, I don't. Know. Yeah, Mike. We're all excited here. <laughs> oh. Why is the clock? The old clock radio, is that what that is on the hood? Yeah, that's uh, one of those, those clocks that I remember growing up. And um, 
I just like to, I like to remind people of things that, you know, that was uh, remembered, you know, that, that clock was our enemy at times too, when we had to get up early for school. So um, I just felt like uh, it was just really necessary at the time. So. Jamie, this show, I mean, you're this 39-year-old strong black male. You, you have this amazing presence, and this show is so vulnerable, so personal. I think that we all feel, we, we feel connected to you through this show. And yeah. I'm, I'm from Louisiana. I have that inspection sticker on my car. Oh, right, right, um, yeah. That's the, that's the, definitely the Louisiana inspection the black, sticker. The black community is so present in Louisiana. I'm from Shreveport, I went to LSU. I have sorority sisters from Thibodeau. Oh, and sweet. I'm just, just thank you for sharing the show. You're welcome. This is, this is good <laughs> stuff. You're welcome. Can you talk about the bird is yeah. it the same on all your pictures, meaning the same same picture, or different birds and different pictures? Yeah, so uh, the sparrows is a symbol of my inner peace um, and another way of bringing peace to the situations. Uh, sometimes um, even painting uh, some of these subjects, it takes you down memory lane and some things you don't really want to, you don't really want to talk about um, sometimes and have the conversation with yourself. So I always try to find a way to kind of keep me at ease because as a, as a creative person, just like any creative person in here, we always, um, sometimes it, the, the creative mind could be like a good thing, could be a bad thing. So um, it's just one of those things where I bring peace to myself and also hopefully because of the, the, the subject matter, it, it does the same thing. I love that. <laughs> so, so like the big box, how you're like expanding your visual vocabulary and describing how this ha thing has a meaning, and especially like when you look at your other things, when you get to using like mixed media, the sculpture with the house, the video. Do you have anything that you haven't tried yet that you want to try? And is there anything that's not painting that you're working on that you're like very excited about? Um, I'm willing to try anything. Uh, I think I want to explore the options of uh, um, creating a film, um, like a full-on film. Uh, and also, as for sculptures, I want to actually use um, gold because gold is one of those things like, and it, it has such a, a, a history behind it. So I want to actually use like raw gold and, and, and create a sculpture out of it. And, you know, instead of a chain or something like that. <laughs> question right here. Thank you for sharing. Um, my question is about the history and um, heritage or leaning age, any of those words. And the question is, um, you said that you don't want to leave your people's picture out of the history. And at such a young age, there's a perfect balance of sophisticated rendering and the sense of freedom. Um, can you speak of artist, hero, or influence that make you lend you the power and the strength to stand against the known uh, Western-centric history of oil painting? What kind of aspect that you pull power out of and what aspect of the history that you take a stance? Um, honestly, like, I feel like I'm just more inspired by, like, just everyday people. Um, I can't really name like my top 10 painters of all time. Although I love Caravaggio's, like one of my favorite uh, painters. Um, but I would have to go through a list of people because it's always like the small things that I, I care about. 
Um, but for the most part, I'm just, I pull power from um, like everyday, everyday folks, like everyday life. Um, go, I go home every month. So I, I still see people doing the same things and uh, just not leaving them out of the, out of history is just my goal. And I feel like I could do that the more I travel across seas. And I, could, I feel like I could do it everywhere because it's happening everywhere that people are living like normal lives. You know, so I, I try to stay grounded and um, I try to stay grounded within like what's going on around me versus like where I want to invite myself to. So I don't, um, I don't want to lose myself. So somewhere, something like that. We also have a question over here. Uh, on this one specifically, uh, is it based on a photo? Is it based more of like a memory? Or is it based on just like a general concept, like feeling or idea? Um, it's, it's, it's not based off a photo at all. It's actually just based off of like a mood more than anything. Um, a lot of my work, I think about what mood that I want to set or what mood that I'm already in and I just create from there. Um, when I created this painting, uh, I think it was International uh, Women uh, Month. And around that time, I start feeling like, man, I, you know, I have to, I wanna pay homage to, to the females uh, that raised me. I was raised by all women. It was, it's not like one of those things where some people, some people say like, oh, I was raised by this and, and, and that, and it's not always, this, it's not always like the, the truth, but I was raised by all women. Like my uncles, my uncle was in, in prison, so I didn't have, I only have two uncles. One worked a lot and the other one was in prison. So um, it's not one of those things where we had anything. You had the streets and you had women. So, and the women taught all the street guys how to be men, so it was like, I've always tried to make sure that I uh, include include uh, women into my work whenever I'm, you know, when I'm feeling it at the time. Can I ask a question? Yep. The recurrent rain that you have in the house, the dollar bills and the little girl's chest, is that the life death color that is Homa and Thibodeau? Uh, the color that never goes away in our life down there. Um, it's not, it's not so much, um, uh, thought out, but because the way our brains are wired, I'm, everything that we see, everything that we hear is programmed in there. So I don't, I just don't fight it. I don't fight it and I don't try to complicate my work or, or trick people and try to pull tricks and things like that. It's just, it just comes and I just work with, with, with what I have. So. Okay. Yep. You said that the bird represented peace, right? Right. Was there a, what, what would you say was the main target of the peace that, you, that the bird represented? Like, what, what I'm asking is, was it a, just for you to find peace as you go about the process? Were you aiming at peace for the mother, for the boss, or uh, the father? Were you aiming for, for peace for the child, for the separation? Is it peace for the person viewing it that even though this is a bad situation, just peace and understanding that this is the reality? So was there a target for the bird when you could put it out there? You just know this is kind of my signature, this is just how I sign my Yeah, that's a good question. Um, when I first started painting the, the sparrows, what happened was um, I, I was adding them in my work, but I, I just knew it was just one of those feelings that I was having because of my grandmother and things like that, and just being in Thibodeau. And I realized some of the things that I was painting, it just brought me so deep down memory lane that I had needed a break from it. So I was painting figurative paintings over and over and over, and I realized like it was, it was making me uh, take off from my studio, and which I love to be at my studio, but it got to a point where I was taking off like for a week, and then we got to two weeks. I was trying to figure out what it was, and I think it was uh, the fact that I had dug myself so deep down memory lane, everything wasn't pleasant down there, you know what I mean? So 
I had, um, one day I was, I was, I just wanted to, I wanted to create, but I didn't know what it was. And I noticed when I was painting these sparrows on the canvases, it was bringing some sort of inner peace. So what I did was I started creating these sparrow paintings to, uh, to give myself a time to heal, give myself a time to like just be at peace with myself. And I felt like if me being as human as I am, I'm sure there's other humans that would enjoy and feel the same way. So that's why I just kept doing them. Every time that I was working on a, uh, a solo exhibition, I was doing spiral paintings just to kind of give me a break and give me a, 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 a time to like just relax. Yeah. Well, I feel, when I see the sparrows, I know that in, in, in many of your paintings, there's so much spirituality and, you know, growing up in the church in Thibodeau with your, with your grandmother and your mother. And so I know there's a connection between the, the sparrow and the biblical sense. The sparrow shows God's love. Right. So that's how I kind of connected the two. Would you say that was reasonable? Um. Although I went to church, I never like paid attention. So I, I, I never, I never, I never ever, I never paid attention. I never even, I never even read the Bible, but it was just part of my culture and it was part of where I was from. So it all just felt right, right? So I might've, I might've heard it and it might've just stored and it just happened. But other than that, it's just one of those things where you know, it was it was an obligation. Like you, when you when grandmother knock on the door. Right, they have sparrows all over the place. You know, all and and specifically on our block, well, on our street, it was my grandma's yard because she was the only one that had like a real like garden at the time. Like she had roses, she had the bush, she had like the. I think this Venus statue, like she really like took care of her yard. So that was the time where um, just thinking about her, she's older and I, didn't, I, I, you know, growing up as a kid, you wanted your grandmother to like see something cool that you've done. So um, I just, I bring it, I bring it with me to the art and um, you know. Well, thank you for sharing that. Oh yeah, not a problem. Um, yeah. There's a question here in the back. You uh, mentioned preparing for a solo exhibition and the sparrows bringing the piece in that preparation process. Um, how were you, quote unquote, discovered? Discovered the. To become a solo exhibitor, to uh, have a presentation in my gallery. Oh, Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> I'm I'm not a I'm not afraid to uh, to give up the secret. It was <laughs> it was it was Instagram. On Instagram, you could become a doctor. So <laughs> you could you could do whatever you want on Instagram. So I encourage everybody to create an Instagram account and uh, whatever your wildest dreams, just become it. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was Instagram. Um, it, it started with it started with someone shared a painting to uh, this guy that's in the music industry, and then my work just started floating around the music industry. And then um, from there, there was another connection from the music industry to the art world at the same time because of the guy who the guy was. And, and then I just ended up I ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this painting right here is, uh, again, just like the essence of just growing up in a church. And uh, sometimes you, I ask myself, like, because there's times where I've seen and witnessed um, adults getting rebaptized. Although we get baptized when we were really young at home, um, seeing an adult get baptized you have to think of the backstory sometimes. Sometimes it's not your business, but at the same time, it makes me wonder on why would, it, 
why would a grown adult feel the need to get rebaptized? Um, and we all have our own reasons. So um, when I created this, this was when I first started painting myself and actually seeing myself for just who I am as a person. Um, Cause originally a lot, well not even originally, um, till this day, a lot of my work is just a stand in for just being from Thibodeau and uh, it's a familiar face for, the, for those that never even seen art, they saw my face before. So uh, it's like an entry to like, hey, it's like a stand in for the whole city, just like the Statue of Liberty is, is like a, supposed to be a stand in for uh, the things that it's supposed to stand for. But uh, um, I create, I, I started painting myself and, and what I started noticing when I was painting myself, it felt, it felt good. It, it, it made me feel like, it made me feel like I was actually finally taking care of myself because I spent so much time making sure everybody else was straight and I never really um, talked about some of the things that I might have been through or, you know, I, I didn't have nobody to talk to about that. So I felt like it was one of those moments where I was able to see myself uh, in a mirror, but instead I was, I was recreating myself and, and um, being able to, to, to forgive myself for the things that I was hard on myself on because I was hard on myself for a lot of things that I just couldn't control. You know, I was a, I was a kid. There's no way to stop some of the things that um, what was happening and uh, I was going through. So, um, same thing. This is uh, from a series that I was working on um, called Karen Caskets. It was my first time um, dealing with the loss of uh, two people that I really, uh, really, really loved. And um, sometimes, you know, just growing up, the way we grew up, it's easy to, to think about revenge. It's easy to think about doing all the wrong things again. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here and a lot of people are still alive and, and, and thriving. But this is, this is just like uh, going through it, feeling it for the first time, because even at the funerals, I, I never cried or was like emotional about it, because I just always was like a, a stone. So uh, it was one of those things of just like, all right, like, let's deal with it. We're gonna, we're gonna highlight yourself, we're gonna focus on you, and we're gonna heal from this, and we're gonna move forward after this. And again, the sparrows are there, symbolizing life and death. And the same thing with the black background, uh, symbolizing life and death at the same time. Um, this is uh, one of my favorite paintings. Uh, this is uh, called Lefty. So a lot of times, if you look at images, group images, uh, you see a whole bunch of people like, um, smiling, but I'm always curious to know what they're thinking. And so here, I wanted to show that opposite person actually uh, doing something totally different from everybody else. Everybody have their, their, uh, their right hands up, but uh, the left-handed guy uh, is doing his thing over there. Uh, and uh, and another, another, that's the reason why I called it lefty, but at the same time, what I did was I had always, I've always had respect for the Black Panther Party uh, it's not a secret. Um, you know, I was I was raised that way, like genuinely raised that way, to uh, have respect for him. Um, so what I wanted to do was I thought about how old I was, I was, and how long my career I want to have, and I was thinking about the Black Panthers. Um, you know, some of them are still alive, and some of them not here no more, and I was like, you know. You know, we could, why, why not give these people their roses right now while I can? You know, I'm young and, you know, I have a platform now, so I'm going to be the guy to talk about it. And I'm going to, I'm going to give a platform to the Vietnam soldiers um, that, that went fight a war that they didn't even have to, they shouldn't have been fighting. Um, and, and paying homage to the, 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 the black guys that was out there 
you know, I'm, I'm, I could, working in the off field, you learn a lot of things. Like, you learn there's a lot of murders that, that, uh, that's just not talked about, because although it's accidents, it's actually murders. So I, I could totally only imagine the amount of people that went to Vietnam and didn't come back because they were shot by the, the enemy whenever the true enemy was actually next to them. So um, I felt like it was really important to, to give them their roses and salute them and uh, thank them for the things that they've, they've done and, and gave me um, a, a fire in my heart to, to keep pushing and, and just, just be myself. It's like, it's not one, I don't, I don't paint about things that just didn't happen, like these things are real. So that's why I don't, I'm not hard on myself about some of the subject matters because I'm like, well, if you don't want to see it, like how about ask the guy that, that was a part of it or the guy that created it or, you know, all, the, you know, all these things, which you'll see later in the, in the slide of what I'm talking about. But, uh, and also the sugar cane is a symbol of growing up in Thibodeau. We have sugar cane, they have sugar cane overseas and, um, and, and you know, just, a, just like a, uh, just like reminiscent of, of Thibodeau, but Vietnam at the same time. What about the musical notes? Um, I was listening to a song, uh, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. And uh, <laughs> so when I, when I, when I create uh, work like this that I never lived, I have to put myself in those, that, that, that time, that moment. So like, I bought a whole bunch of clothes from like the Vietnam era. I, uh, I was playing music that came from that time. And I was just, just putting myself in that time because I never lived it, so how could I know um, how to really pull it together and, 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 and make it feel um, the right way? So I needed to do that for myself, and I'm hoping that others could, that come from that time could say, okay, he nailed it, it feels right. So. This painting is the one that I initially was so taken with because I saw the Vietnam experience for the African American men. But you're but you're saying but it's also giving homage to the Black Panther Party as well. So is it kind of a fusion of those? And then on that, they remind me of the gentlemen the soldiers or men that were in uh, Chadwick Bozeman uh, one of his last movies, The oh, Blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any influence from that movie or thought? Because it's so that when they're when they're going back in the time, right? These guys remind me so much of them right. in that era. Um, I never watched the movie, and I never, uh, I, I never watched the movie. Definitely wasn't uh, inspired by it. I was inspired by like real stories. Uh, my mom, um, ex-husband, was a Vietnam soldier, and uh, he told me uh, some of the stories that they was doing on the movie was actually the the show was actually real that I heard. But I never really got into the movie like that. But it was definitely from. Uh, from actual soldiers, and also there was a um, there was this 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 white guy that uh, came to my studio when I had this painting up, and he remembered those guys right there. So I, that's how I knew I was doing the right thing, um, because it was just like I I just recollect the, the stories that was told. So. Oh, thank you. Uh, as you get more familiar with oil, do you ever feel disconnected from your earlier works? Um, I had a bad experience with oil uh, like two days ago, so <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how much um, all paintings I'm going to do, but I called a few a few people that um, I I begged them to get some advice, and I don't right now I'm just kind of like oh. I don't, I don't know if, but I'm gonna keep exploring 
everything that I get my hands on. Um, the way I, I, I did, I started exploring all paintings was when, um, I think, uh, you're familiar with Azo Art? So when Azo Art shut down, uh, I knew one of the workers there, and he just gave me a whole bunch of oil paints and brushes and a whole bunch of things to try out. And, uh, and I think that was like a year ago or something like that. And I just finally put it to use. And um, I was real confident the first, the confident the first time I, I used it. I was like, man, I, I, I nailed it. But I realized I painted the back of the head. I haven't even painted the face yet. And I tried to paint the face. And it, it was, I was like, nah, this, I'll, I'll, I, I'm going to be painting until I'm old. So I, I'm sure eventually I'll circle back and, and, and touch it up. You know? But until then, I'm, I'm acrylic. Jamie, I'm sorry to be the party pooper, but it's 7.06, I just wanted to let you know. Oh, oh okay. Um. I, just, I just had a quick question about um, the glitter, because this is the first in the selection that you included um, for tonight. So I was just wondering how you came into like, including like, gold glitter in your works, because um, I think they're, it's like, very profound to have. So I just wanted to get um, so um, because we're close to the end, I'm going to skip to one of, one of this painting right here. So when I started using glitter, it was one of those things of uh, just taking something like gold glitter, not just any glitter, but I started taking the gold because how much uh, comes with, with gold. You know, in Africa, there's kids that's getting their hands cut off behind it. There's, um, in America, people getting uh, robbed and murdered behind it. And, um, but we have like this, this, it holds so much power, just like a diamond for some reason, right? So what I started doing was taking it and using it for whatever I wanted to use it for was to give it out to the public for free. So I started putting it in the art. And uh, so this painting right here, I used it right there. This is like red glitter, but this is the gold glitter. I used it right here because um, I don't talk about it a lot, <clears throat> a lot, but my dad is from Sierra Leone. So um, I never wanted to talk about it, especially like publicly, because I didn't want to take away from, especially as an artist, I didn't want people to classify me as an African artist because I had always lived um, just in black neighborhoods. So I, I never grew up in the African culture. So I just always strayed away from it, but I always dropped hints of what's uh, my identity, which is this painting right here is based off of my identity. So I added the zebra right here, which is he's uh, half, you know, the half of the zebra, which is myself. And uh, this guy right here, he has gold teeth because symbolizing the South, you know, um, a while back, uh, a long time ago, I always thought like everything was ghetto. You know, you hear, oh, this is gold this, and gold teeth, that's ghetto. And I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, my grandmother still have gold teeth. My aunts got gold teeth. And I realized it's not ghetto. It's actually just culture. So uh, even though this guy has a suit on, he still has his gold teeth. And that's also uh, the way I carry myself is like just be myself. Um, if I can't wear a hat in a restaurant, I'm not going in it. Um, if I got to dress up, I'm most likely not popping up. So, um, so that's was uh, the whole the whole thing, right? Uh, with him is about, and I highlighted the lady again. I was raised by all women, and I gave her this nice gold frame to to uh, salute her because of I know what. I know what my mom been through, and I know what a lot of my aunts been through, and I know what just women in general still go through. So I, uh, I felt like it was more important to highlight her, um, highlight her in a way of like, um, that you just have to see her. Like she's not uh, included with him, like she is the, she is the, the, main, the main person there. And the zebra over here, because he's, he's half of that, so, but, yeah. Yep. Um, I really appreciated how you drop 
from like the not so distant revolutionary like past America um, and how you connect it to um, like the state of our communities uh, and just like the state of America now. Um, I I know the, the title of this exhibit is called um, Make the Revolution Irresistible. So I wanted to know, to me, don't know one, like, what, like, I read a little bit about why you chose that name, but I was curious to know, like, a little bit more and if you could speak on that. Um, and I also wanted to know um, how you or, like, people, artists in general, um, Use art to dream of like what a revolutionary future could look like. Um, so the the title came uh, from a conversation that I was having with Maria, and I'm always like a student a student of everything, and I love poetry. I love um, just 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 anybody that's doing something. Like I, I'm always gonna keep digging. So it was uh, from Tony Cat, and then when she spoke about being a um, being a worker for like representing for the um, uh, oppressed people, I just felt instantly right then and there. I was like, that's, well, that's me. Because growing up, um, it was more, it might not be oppressed, but at the same time, I think about class. So uh, I felt like I wanted to be a symbol, well, I still feel like I want to be a symbol for those at the class that might not be the most popular, but um, I want to I want to be there to give them advice to get to places like this and and do things like this. Um, I don't I don't remember the rest of the question, but the second part of my question was um, how can you or like other artists in general use uh, art and like your platform and uh, uh, you know medium um, to dream of a revolutionary. Um, I feel like as for artists, I think that um, we have the most powerful uh, voices um, because, you know, art has photography, has, um, you know, painting and, and music. And I feel like that's some of the most powerful things. So um, speaking on subjects that uh, means something to you as an artist, I think that it should just be, it should just come out regardless of what it is, you know, even if it's political or if it's not political, if it's just painting mountains or trees. So I just feel like you gotta just do what's, what's real to you. Like, um, I wasn't thinking about making a revolution or things like that. I just came from uh, people that actually was fighting to ch make a revolution. So because of those things, it's just it's just automatically in me. It's always been in me. Um, so that's uh, that's what that's my advice, anyways. Well, thank you. I think that's.